Food safety is a major concern for consumers, farmers, and buyers. Good agricultural practices, or GAPs, are the steps taken in produce packing areas that address ways of reducing microbial contamination. Some of the microbes we are particularly concerned about are E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria, and Campylobacter, among others. One area where reducing microbial risk is critical is in the washing and cleaning of produce. To help you better understand the safety of your produce, we are going to look at a set of standard operating procedures for using a germicidal bleach in the produce washing station. This process is all about keeping food clean so people don't get sick from the germs that sometimes get on fruits and vegetables that farmers grow. The first step is preparation. This example will show you how to use bleach as a sanitizing solution in a produce washing station. Alternatively, to learn more about how to sanitize with the use of parasitic acid, look for links in the video's description. As you can see, we have already built a washing station out of PVC pipe and fencing. To learn how to build your own washing station, check out the link in the description below. Once you have assembled the washing station, here is what you will need. Three clean wash tubs, potable water, a stirring spoon, chlorine bleach that has been designated for the sanitation of surfaces and produce, a measuring cup, white vinegar if using bleach, and two kinds of test strips, one for measuring pH and another for measuring the total available chlorine in the sanitizing solution. It is important to understand that some of the chlorine that you are using for the sanitizing solution will bind to the water molecules and be unable to act as an effective germicide. So we will have to compensate for this effect when determining how much bleach we would like to add to our solution. Now that we have all the necessary materials, we can begin preparing our sanitizing solution. To calculate the amount of bleach needed, we need to know several things. First, the concentration of chlorine in the bleach. Second, the volume of the wash water. And third, the rate required to sanitize the water. In this example, we will be filling each of our wash bins with five gallons of potable water. Once we have filled up the wash bins, we need to calculate how much bleach needs to be added to each bin. The bleach selected has a concentration of 8.25%. For safety, use goggles or safety glasses and rubber gloves. For the first two bins in the washing station, in this case, the red bin and the yellow bin, the recommended concentration of available chlorine is 25 parts per million. And for the third bin, the recommended concentration of available chlorine is five parts per million. However, because organic matter such as soil will inevitably come off of the produce and cause your total available chlorine levels to drop, we are going to be on the safe side and begin with 50 parts per million in the first two basins and 10 parts per million in the third. 10 parts per million is a good level for rinsing because it minimizes contamination, but will not impart any noticeable smell or flavor onto the produce. To determine how much volume of bleach is needed to achieve this concentration for each bin, we will use the following formula. We multiply the desired parts per million of free chlorine, again, for the first two bins in this example, that was 50 parts per million, by the volume of wash water, which in this example was five gallons of water, and we then divide that by the amount of sodium hypochlorite in our bleach multiplied by 10,000. In this particular brand of bleach, the concentration is 8.25%. We can then convert the volume of bleach needed from gallons to teaspoons, which in this case comes out to 2.3 teaspoons. For the third tank, since we only need a concentration of 10 parts per million, we can just divide 2.3 teaspoons by five. We can now begin mixing the sanitizing solution. Step one, add the calculated amount of sanitizing product to each wash bin and stir using the plastic or metal stirring spoon. Step two, measure the pH of the sanitizing solution using your pH test strips. In order for your sanitizing solution to be effective, you have to have the right pH. The target pH is seven, but six and a half to seven and a half is an acceptable range. If your pH is too high, Add half a teaspoon at a time of white vinegar until you receive the desired pH. Step three, use a free chlorine test strip to measure the available sanitizing solution concentration. If you are not reaching the target 50 parts per million in the first two bins or 10 parts per million in the third bin, add small increments of bleach to the solution until you achieve the desired concentration. Now that we have successfully made the sanitizing solution, we can begin washing our produce. 
First, use a hose that is connected to a potable water source to rinse off as much debris and soil from the produce as you can. Then move the produce into a smaller container that will allow you to easily dunk the produce into your washing bins. Place the produce in the first tank for at least one minute when using bleach. Depending on the type of produce, dunk, redunk, agitate, or do whatever is necessary to remove remaining debris and soil from the produce. Next, dunk the produce into the remaining two bins. This will allow for further cleaning and will remove residual chlorine. After a few batches, check the sanitizer level and turbidity of the wash solution. Turbidity refers to the cloudiness of the water based on how many particles are suspended in the solution. As we mentioned earlier, when organic matter comes off the produce, turbidity increases and the amount of available chlorine begins to fall. To test the turbidity level, place a turbidity indicator card underneath the bottom of a clear container. Fill the container with water from the sanitizer or rinse bucket. If when looking down into the container, you can only see the dark brown area on the card or cannot see the card at all, it is time to change the water. We recommend having a second set of wash bins with the required amount of sanitizer on hand to save time. Some farmers are looking for ways to improve the washing mechanism, especially for greens. Using an aerator made from a jacuzzi motor and PVC pipe is one example. For more on this, please go to the Cornell Vegetable Team website cvp.cce.cornell.edu. Once you have finished rinsing off your produce, allow it to drip dry. Your produce is now ready for distribution, storage, or sale. One final word of advice. We recommend practicing this process before harvest. That way, you know exactly what to do when the time comes.